going to do is we're going to start with a basic tiramisu. Uh, pick me upper, uh, what they call in Italy. Uh, when I'm talking to a friend or somebody from Italy, when they talk about gelato, the first thing they're going to ask about is, we want Nutella, Nutella, which is hazelnut. They don't want to know anything else but hazelnut. That's the main factor for them. We're going to make that this morning too. But we have here our dry ingredients and wet ingredients. We have our sugar, our stabilizer and emulsifier, and our flavor. For this particular situation here, there's 350 grams of flavor. How did I come up with that scenario? Well, I'm really not that smart. But the fact of the matter is you want to have at least 80 grams per thousand on your wet ingredients. So we're going to have about 4,500 uh, grams of wet ingredients here, so we're going to add at least 350 grams of flavor. Now, under ideal conditions, you blend this all together and you let it marinate. Minimum 20 minutes, minutes uh, we have some people that are marinating overnight. So the longer it marinates, the better it is. What makes it a little easier to blend is you put your wet ingredients in first and then your dry. Some people like to mix their dry first before they put it in with their wet, but to simplify matters, we're going to take one gallon of whole milk, okay? So we don't splash everybody, we're going to just gently put it in there. Now a lot of your companies that sell gelato paste will tell you all you need is whole milk. I like to use heavy cream in my batch. And they all tell me, but it increases the butter fat. Okay, it goes from seven to eight percent, increases the butter fat. But what it does, it adds creaminess and smoothness to the product. So we're gonna take at least 16 ounces of heavy cream. Hey Dan, you talked about some of the difference between gelato and, and a traditional American ice cream. Yes sir. What temperature does the best gelato best stored at and served at? Well, here's the nicest thing about gelato. Once we take it out of the machine and it goes into the blast freezer or the hardening cabinet, it has a six month shelf life, okay? Once it, it's brought up the temperature and depending on your box between nine and 11 degrees of where it was serving on that, it'll stay in your box three to five days. This is a product that's meant to be consumed on a daily basis, okay? That's why so many, in Italy, everything is made fresh every day. Now, one of the things we can talk about if we have the time here today, there's absolutely no waste for gelato because what you can do, anything that's left in your display case, you can make gelato pops, mm -hmm. you can make gelato cakes, and you can take and make a gelato cake, an eight inch gelato cake with what you have left over and sell it for $40, okay? Now, I'm not gonna, there's other people that make ice cream cakes and different things like that that are going to sell you something for eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars and it's that big. You can do an eight inch, nine inch round gelato cake with uh, uh, a cake bottom, a vanilla sponge cake bottom, two different flavors of gelato with a crunch in the center and you can decorate it magnificently, okay, and get at least 40 dollars for it. We do have some decorations here today which you're going to decorate some stuff and, and the point is there you're minimizing your waste. And you're, no max, you're maximizing the batch, what's coming out of the batch. Absolutely. Not every flavor is going to be a home run, so some stuff well, might not might might last more than three, five days in, in the cabinet at different times of year. Yes. So the trick is turn that into something you can profit off of. Yes. Now, I'm a pain in the neck. So I dropped a couple things here. Clean place is a happy place. So what we're doing here is we're adding our sugar. And if you want the recipe, what you have to do is come to Century's Open House which is the first weekend of March every year. And when you buy a machine, we'll teach you. You get the recipe. So this is the emulsifiers and stabilizers in here. We put the sugar in. Now sometimes at this point, some guys will get a whisk and they'll whisk, whisk it around just to blend it a little bit. Because we're going to use an immersible blender, uh, we're not going to do that today. It's a shame. I have to smell that before you put it in. That's what I was going to say. It's a shame that we don't have smell and vision here because the bouquet is absolutely fabulous. Uh, tiramisu uh, for the cake, 
thermosu pastry in Italy. It's called a, a pick me upper, and it's usually something that happens uh, mid afternoon, which is their main meal in Italy. And uh, we've had some great success with this. Now, what you want to do, gently put it into the mixture. You don't want to leave any money in the container. Yeah, because. Again, comparing traditional American ice cream to gelato, the ingredients in gelato production are more expensive than your traditional ingredients in producing American style ice cream. That's absolutely correct. Ice cream. But, but if you're getting a ice cream cone for two dollars and thirty-five cents, you're getting a, a wonderful gelato for three dollars and eighty-five cents. Sure. So. It's more expensive to make, but it gets a better price point. Not leave any money in there. Too bad you can't smell this. It's absolutely wonderful, the bouquet. So we have this in a sanitizer solution to sanitize the immersible blender. And depending on what, what I'm using, I want to blend this at least two to three minutes. So because I am not that good at counting or remembering, I just start the counter on the machine. Okay? So Blending it homogenizes the flavors, mixes that tiramisu bouquet with your milk and your cream and your sugar and your stabilizer. Make sure you nice have a creamy, all put together homogenized liquid that's going to go into our machine. Not you want to eliminate all the clumps, you want to make sure everything's mixed properly. The best thing to do is use a clear tub like this so you can see if anything's stuck on the walls or there's any clumps that have accumulated in the bottom of the tub. Okay, so we blended that for a minimum of two minutes. Now, the, this particular flavor is a little loose, back in the sanitizer. So two minutes is favorable with blending it. Some flavors are a lot thicker. Some flavors have some fruit in it. So that I will go at least three minutes, like a, a blackberry flavor or a chocolate, which is a little thicker. Uh, sometimes we'll take the chocolate and we'll put it in the microwave for 10 seconds, loosen it up a little bit, put it in there so it blends a lot better. But flavors like that, that are a thicker consistency on the paste, I'll do three minutes on it. So now, through the magic of television and of video, we let this marinate for a half hour. So we want to be able to have at least a half hour marination, 20 minutes to a half hour marination. Now we're ready to go into the machine. <music>